what's going on guys welcome back to clash with eric today we continue our coverage of the town hall 11 queso cup tournament all town hall 11 5v5 one attack per player and this is the semi-finals the teams that make it to the grand finals are going to split a prize pool of 2500 euros 1800 euros for first place 700 euros for second place and we are down to the four teams left we have the queen walkers in the first bracket there, playing out of one UOL, five Queen Walkers. That is Unicorns of Love and Queen Walkers mixed together. Two pro teams uh, combining to make a really, really powerful team. They won the Town Hall 10 Queso Cup Championship. We have Bang Bang fighting them for this first match. And then on the other half of the bracket there, we got Oxy and Naughty Friend Fear, which we will show later on. All right, guys, it's time to kick into this. Make sure you hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to use code ERIC. And let's kick this war off. Here we go. Chichen is live, right on cue. Coming in with a Zap Dragon attack to start it off. Now remember guys, they're not allowed to use Siege Machines. They're all in level one clans and the only players that are allowed to participate in any way are other Town Hall 11s. So no Siege Machines, no Headhunters, no Yetis, only what these players can get from other Town 11s. And here we go. Starting with a push with Dragons. The Queen should take out the air defense here before it causes too much damage. And he zapped out the other two air defenses on the opposite side of the base. The Queen is getting funneled to walk downward on the base there to follow the King to go grab that air defense on the outside. He has multiple heal spells. He'll rage up to fight through the Expos and get the enemy Queen down. And then he'll heal as he goes into the Multi-Inferno in the middle of the base there. Taking Eagle Strikes and he'll heal right through it. Is he going to lose that dragon? He might. Oh, it's hanging in there. No, it's going to go down. All right, he's starting to lose dragons just a little bit. The Queen going through a wall. I don't know why she's attacking a wall right there. She could easily round it and get around to somewhere easier to get in. Here comes the next heal. Healing the top group there. Interesting choice to go to the top group. But they are taking the Eagle Strikes. So he's slowly trudging his way through to get to this Eagle Artillery, but it's a fight to get in there. He sends in the Baby Dragon to try and reinforce in the middle. Needs to get that Eagle down. He's sending a balloon to go reinforce on the right side to get the Archer Tower and then the Expo down. But he's still a long shot away here from finishing it. He's still got a freeze. The Dragon's still taking Eagles. That Eagle is just firing away, causing so much damage. But look at the queen. Look at the baby dragon in the middle of the base. They're coming in clutch here. The queen would love to get some of these uh, cannons down so she doesn't have to uh, fight them later on. But she still has a freeze. The minion's going to get one of the cannons. If the queen can attack the wall outside of the range of the defenses, then uh, she will be good. But she's going to have to step all the way forward and attack the wizard tower because she can reach that over the wall. And that is going to make so that she's going to move too slow. It will be a defense here. And all 11. Extremely difficult when you don't have access to Siege Machines. 95%. Still a solid attack here. But they'll be uh, even short there chasing that triple. Kairos is live against Gaku. Here we go. Coming in with a Zap Super Archer attack. Going after the Expo farm. If he can thin out these Expos and get the Eagle Artillery down, then that will reduce the damage that the Super Archers will take. And then the Super Archers can actually reach those Expos over the wall. So the Queen's going to try to walk off to the bottom corner. The Super Archers are going to go upward, and he'll be ending on the Town Hall, guys. A two-prong attack here. Let's see if he can get it. He's using a Baby Dragon in the bottom corner to collapse in and push the queen into the air defense there. Your dragon is OP, doing a good job. Expos are gonna drop. Only two Expos can fire on him. He can heal through two Expos. What he can't do is heal through four Expos while he's taking eagle shots. So the lightning there was critically important to the setup of this attack. The queen will pull the CC, super wall break her in, managing two different effectively charges at the same time because Super Archers, while they don't need a lot of spell support, they can potentially need that spell support. But, but look at that. Over on the uh, top side, there's not a lot that is really going to threaten these Super Archers. The damage up there is very, very thinned out. 
He just needs to really deal with the hero. So his king will get a little bit of damage on the enemy king there before he uh, goes down. This uh, OP minion there. Remember the minion on the cannon? Oh, it gets shot. Never mind. <laughs> All right, just ride. But if he can get the heroes down, he's in a really, really good spot. The heroes are the biggest threat to this attack at this point. And both heroes are down. He's looking good. He can carry this all the way through. All the way to the triple. Here we go. But the uh, air defense goes down through the wizard tower. Town Hall's going to drop. I mean, he can swag a ward ability and a rage at this point. This is crushed, guys. What a smart attack here. Super archers. Obviously, a favorite when we do no siege machine wars because they can do this and if you can set them up correctly there's not a lot that can slow them down not a lot that can stop them there we go got a lot of giant bombs and, and small bombs going off at the end there but he'll swag his warden swag his queen and he didn't really need that rage either he's gonna get out of there with huge swag and gaku goes down bang bang starts on top stars is live against king i pro I've seen a lot of good things out of King Eye Pro here, so I'm betting this Bang Bang team to be very, very strong. Even though they went with a name that I don't think matches their previous team names. All right. The players are what matters more than the team name. But uh, playing against this big team name like Queen Walkers and Unicorns of Love on the other side is going to be daunting for anybody. So he use the Lightning to take out an Air Defense. Also gets the Quake damage off of the the Inferno to damage up the Eagle and the Expo a little bit. Don't waste that Quake value, guys. Get as much value out of that Quake as possible. Finish off the defenses that you need to finish. And then spread that damage out to weaken up all the structures so the Dragons can move through a little bit faster. Tessa's popping up there in the channel. Let's see if more Tessa's continue to pop there. The Queen will grab their defense. Looking good here as the Queen and the King are... Moving along the bottom of the base, Archer's out of the CC with a Dragon. Can power right through that. The ward ability timing was a little bit off there. Did take the Eagle Strikes to the Dragons. Doesn't want that, but if you get the Eagle down quickly before he takes a third strike, he should be pretty well off here. He heals, and that'll help him out a lot. A Baby Dragon comes in the backside, and he'll grab out the Tessa that got missed, and that'll help get that, infer that uh, Eagle Artillery down. More Tessas popping. The Baby Dragon! Again, huge value in the channel there, picking up multiple Teslas. It does go down up there, and the dragons finally are trying to work their way to the Eagle Artillery, but the enemy king, the strongest air defense in the game, is distracting, and the dragons are not going to the Eagle. They're walking right past it. They need to turn back. One splits up there, but it's not enough. The Eagle will stand. Oh, no. How do they go past the Eagle? How do they walk right past the Eagle Artillery? I think it'll be a fail because of that. It's going to deal too much damage. Queen taking heavy fire from the cannon. Cannon finally drops. He has a long way to go, guys. And his eagle is going to be beating down on him the entire way through the base. The eagle will be the last structure to go down if he survives that long. He'll need the queen to take out three defenses here at a minimum. And hopefully attack a wall outside of the range of the Teslas. She will need to come in clutch here to help get that eagle down. Look at that! She survived! Oh, she goes down to the mortar! What? Stupid mortar! I don't know if she would have helped either way. I don't know if this is going to happen for him. This eagle artillery doing way too much damage here. Ending this raid, stopping it in its tracks. And we're going to see another 95% two star from the Queen Walkers. Nice try, stars. Toby, live against Chijin. Here we go. Coming in with a zap witch attack. I'm gonna zap out a multi inferno. He's got two jump spells. And I feel like I saw this base yesterday, but not with his approach. You use the jump spells to get into this inferno. And then he's got a second jump spell and a. He's got a heal to go through to get to the Multi-Inferno, but the second jump is going to be critical to get him to this Eagle Artillery. If he gets the Eagle down quick, he can make this work. When you don't have healers, you need to spread your troops out to minimize the value that the Eagle Artillery can get onto the base. 
So watch out for eagle strikes here. Oh, he should be popping his warden right there. Ah, oh, he's taking a lot of fire there from the eagle artillery. Could be preventing that. Can't heal through it without healers. All right, here's the rage. Is he warden now? Oh, he's just taking these. He's just taking those warden strikes or the eagle strikes. I mean. Now he pops it. Okay. Didn't hit as lot as. Uh, I felt like he should have popped a lot earlier. I feel like he should have used that warden way, way earlier in the attack. As soon as that second round of eagle strikes was popping in. I'm not even 100% convinced that he's going to get the town hall down here. That expo. Beat. No, it does transfer off. Okay. He'll get the town hall. But can he finish off the base? This center expo. Is it low health? It needs to go down though. The warden might be able to finish it. What's the warden going after? If he can get that expo, he's got a shot. This backside wizard tower also going to cause some problems. But the warden goes down. The expo holding strong here. I think it's going to be a defense. It's close. And now I wonder. I wonder if an earlier warden ability would have made the difference in this attack. One way or another, the expo holding strong. No access to it at any point during the attack here. And he will get out of here into the low 80s. 83% will be the final. That's right, Toby. I mean, he's chipping away there. He's uh, he's determined. He's going to get through that wall. Sometime next year, I think. Sometime next year. Quality content right here. That's right. <laughs> All right. Little Larry unable to get through the wall there. It'll be a defense. 83% for Bang Bang. And this might be the door open for the Queen Walkers to begin a comeback. We'll see. Currently, Unicorns of Love Queen Walkers is up on percentage by 7%, which is about 8 buildings at Town 11. But they need to get the star here. They need to get the 3 star, and they need to hold another defense if they want to take the lead. Gaku coming in with super archers. Zapping out the core of the base there to get the eagle artillery. Got the sweepers as well. We will have to keep a close eye on the core. As he approaches that 50%, if Tess is popping the core, the super archers will not be able to reach them. But at the same time, he doesn't want the eagle firing down on him the whole time. So we'll see what he can do here. He's got three healers set aside here for the super archers. And just like we saw in the previous attack, He's going to have the Queen walk one half of the base. The Super Archers walk the other half of the base. And he's going to need some shots onto the Town Hall that will hit that Inferno behind it. And he's not getting that. Inferno's uh, pit chipping away at these Super Archers, but he needs to get that Inferno down. One Super Archer splits off from the group. It's going to die to the Inferno. King comes down up at the top corner to push the Super Archers into the base. Luckily, the queen will clear most of the buildings there and will mix with the super arches that do split off to the bottom there to go take it out if they go there. They're not going there. The inferno will stay. Does he have a plan for it? Does No, he doesn't have a... If he had like a baby dragon or something, he could go after it. But he's just going to have to come back for it at the end. Tessa pops by the town hall. Queen loses a healer to a black mine. She'll continue wrapping around that bottom corner. I don't know. I'm a little skeptical whether this will work. But look at the line of super archers. Can hit the Tesla's here, maybe? No, they don't get the pathing to shoot right through. There's the ward ability. So he engages the enemy heroes. Good timing in that. Pop the king. Put that enemy queen down. Work to the king. You can still come back on this, guys. He's got a minion working over in the corner. He's got time. I mean, this is going very quickly here with the Queen and the Super Archers working together. He's clearly got the power to take the base. He just needs to get in there and get back to that Inferno. And look at this. This wall break at the end is going to let the Queen into the Tesla farm. They can actually circle back into the base and they can reach the Inferno. But not the Tesla. 30 seconds. Come on. All the way through. All the way through. Here comes a balloon. There's a rage. He still has a rage. Oh, he gets it! He shoots through the Inferno and gets the Tesla down, and Gaku's got the triple! There we go! There we go! 
<laughs> OP Rage and the Archers picking off the Tessa, saving the time. I think he may have had time to get to it either way. But that just made it even more epic right there. Nice job, Gaku. Putting his team in a position to take the lead. But they gotta get a defense. They gotta get a defense. Okay. King Guy Pro. Coming in with a Queen Walk Mass Baby Dragon. He brought two healers in a CC and then three more separate from that. That way, when he deploys balloons or baby dragons, they don't stack up on top of each other. He has a quad quake to open up the base and it's looking like he's going to go right in between here to open it up. And look at that. If he can get in there, he can uh, get the queen to go off to the right. She can reach the inferno from there. He'll just mow through these expos because they're all at very low health now. He can, with a rage, he can probably like two shot him, right? Not rage yet. Don't need to. Yeah, without the rage, it's four shot after the uh, quad quake, which makes the queen move very, very quickly. And the quad quake is going to give her access to the eagle artillery once she gets all the way in here. He'll start to collapse in with the baby dragon while the king is doing some tanking out there. King still has his ability, and he can continue to collapse in more baby dragons to work with the king. His queen, hopefully, will stay on the inside of the base here. I think she will continue to round these corners and move forward, but he needs to get these buildings down before she decides she wants to take a different path. Loses two healers to a black mine. That hurts. He'll step into the queen, and he'll get perfect access into the ego artillery. Taking a shot to his healers, though. Ego will drop before it causes too much more damage. Now, where's this queen going to go from here? This is an OP charge right here. There's the CC pull, draws a hound out. Baby dragon circling over on the right bottom side. And he doesn't have a lava hound here, but he used the warden ability to protect the uh, baby dragons. Uh, the hound, that the balloons I mean, that's what I'm trying to say. The balloons as they work their way to the air defense. The queen will uh, assist and continue around the inside ring. She can just follow the loop here where the baby dragons collapse in around her and she can reach everything of significance. Everything that can really threaten this queen charge. Looking really good now, but he is down to three healers and they're all at very low health. Come on, queen. Hold together here. Oh, she saved that healer. Barely got the stuff down there. Do have to go to ability to get to the king. Let's go ahead and pop it now. There we go. Get the sweeper. 36 seconds. Stinky Goblin's coming down. Get the Inferno. Oh, she's out of... She's out. Her healers are dying. Oh, they stay alive! King Eye Pro with an OP! Queen Charge Mass Baby Dragon! And he gets it done! That was an awesome attack, guys! And that is going to maintain the lead here for Bang Bang. They are two out of three. And they're looking good. Looking good. Let's keep it rolling. You know, you love them. It's Klaus coming in next. Coming in with Zap Dragons. Keep it simple here. It's uh, weird to see Klaus keeping anything simple. But we'll see what he does here. He's got five lightning and a quake. I wonder if he zaps out this and this and clips the queen on both sides. That's exactly what he's doing. And he'll get the cannons out of it as well. Oh, he doesn't get that. Uh, He didn't hit the top air defense there. Sorry, he's got it. He's got it. Nice setup. Two air defenses in the queen and the cannons out of the way there, forming a nice funnel. Laps in with the baby dragons and a couple balloons to pick off those air targeting defenses with no with no air defenses in the area to shoot those balloons down. It can uh, make an awesome funnel right there. And this is looking very, very clean. He hasn't deployed the heroes yet. We'll see where he decides he wants to use those. And nothing comes out of the CC. You know what that means? That means there's a Lava Hound inside with a balloon, and he's never going to have to fight it at all. Warden ability nice and early into the attack here. Heroes come in on the right side. This is the optimal attack for what is in that CC. He had no idea what was in it coming into this, and he had to take a gamble. But either way, plays it safe. We always assume that there's going to be a Hound in there, and we choose our attack based on that. Because if it's not, then you're okay with dragons, because they can fight off whatever. But if it is... Then uh, you get this. You get this. All right. He's got a small Lalo coming in on the right side. He'd love to see him come in with a balloon up and go pick up that arch tower up there. 
Arch Tower is really causing a lot of problems. Let's turn the warden here in a second. Heroes get the Town Hall down. Look at that Expo as well. Rage is up the Lalo that's coming in over on the bottom side. But he has to get through both of these Infernos still. He's a long way from a 3-star right now. And the King right there as well. The enemy King. Do not lose track of him. I think it's a fail. I don't think Klaus is going to get this one. There goes a bunch of dragons going down to traps in the middle. And this is 100% a defense. Klaus. Unable to get it done here. Is Bang Bang going to take down Queen Walkers right now? Is this happening? Yeah, we'll get it. It's one shot. All right. 88. No, 89% will be the final. Nice try. Still decent percentage. I think Queen Walkers will likely maintain their percentage advantage. But they are going to need to come in clutch with their final attack. And Yuta 14 will have to bring it home. However, Bang Bang still has two attacks. If they can get another triple on the board here. And go to 13 stars. That was my prediction for who would win. I said 12 stars can win it. But 13 stars will win it. A chance right now to close out the war. Bang Bang is live. I don't know what this guy's name actually is, but I like to call him not a banana. <laughs> I don't know. I just like it. Whatever. That's, I'll do me. You do you. Let's go in here with a Queen Charge Lalo. With a little bit of Zap Quake to take out some Expos. Takes out an Air Defense and a Wizard Tower. And he'll use that as a funneling point here to get his Queen Charge underway. Baby Dragon, pull in the Queen. We'll work uh, his way through that area to drive the Queen towards this Inferno. He's got a jump spell, but I think he's in a wall break in initially. Use the King up ahead to funnel the Queen in. Baby Dragon getting good value there. Now, where does this wall break go? He goes for the jump spell. Interesting. Oh, here's what he's going to do. He'll jump initially, and he'll send a wall breaker through the jump spell to open up the Ego compartment. Watch this. Watch this. If you didn't know you could do this, wall breakers can take jump spells. This is OP, guys. Look at this. Oh, yeah. I love it. Let's go. All the way to the core. Fight out the heroes. Watch this air defense over on the left side, though. He might need to start the Lalo very, very soon to protect the healers from that air defense. Keep a close eye on it. The queen moving forward, though. There's air defense. Get the strikes. There's a CC pull. Start the Lalo. Start the Lalo. Ah, oh, you're losing healers fast. Start the Lalo. What are you doing? No, don't go in from that side. See? Save the healers. <laughs> oh, no. Goodbye, queen charge. Goodbye, queen charge. Oh, man. Could have taken out the whole core. Could have taken the whole core, guys. Can he still get this, though? He did get a decent amount of value with the Queen Charge, but that Inferno at the end is going to be a big problem as he only has one haste to carry him through it. And he still has all the Teslas in the middle, probably with a lot of red mines hiding in their mist. There's a haste. Air it's a fail. It's a fail all day. Oh, man. If he would have started this... What do you think? If he would have started this Lalo from the left side, would he have tripled? I feel like he would have. I feel like he had a solid chance there if the queen would have survived. He had to save the queen. And he had to protect her. He had to protect her healers if he wanted a chance to get through. His attack is so reliant on the queen to get into that core, take the eagle, and wipe that core just like we saw in that mass baby dragon attack. They'll get out of here into the 80s, though. Air skellies are going to pick off a lot here. Oh, look at that. They... They got the Tesla down in the core. That was pretty lucky. Pick up a bit more percentage out of that. Every percentage is going to matter here, guys. If the Queen Walkers triple and then can hold a defense in the last one, it will come down to percentage. 84% will be the final. Let's try. Maybe if he was a banana, he could get it. Ah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Maybe he needs to channel his inner banana and get it. <laughs> okay, this is a very significant thing here. The Queen Walkers are currently up on percentage. 
That means if they triple, that'll put them up to a 95.8%. That would make so that the only path for Bang Bang to beat them after that would be a triple of their own. So we will be concentrating on Yuta's attack here. If Yuta triples and Bang Bang doesn't, then Unicorns of Love slash Queen Walkers takes the win. However, if both defend, Bang Bang obviously wins, or if Bang Bang triples, they win no matter what. Let's see what happens. It's time. Ready for this? Yuta versus Nita. And we're live! The moment of truth. Coming in with a zap Queen Charge Lalo. Seven lightnings. Two rages. No spell support. For the Lalo. Queen Charge over on the left side. Start off here. He's got four super wall breaks to carry him in. He got the Eagle Artillery down, and he got the enemy Queen down. Super early in the attack here. Baby Dragon comes down with a couple blooms to go snipe off the Arch Tower over around the corner. That will funnel the queen and keep her centered here. Goes for another wall break. Wall break will go all the way in. Does not make it to the wall. Now we can try again. He can try again. He's got plenty of super wall breakers. His healers are taking shots there from the wizard tower. Needs to deal with that right now. Sends in a couple of blues to go snipe it off. Queen is not cooperating here. Wall break goes over to the... Oh, man. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This is the most important wall break. And he gets it open. And it only leads him to the core. That's almost, that's pretty much ideal. He can actually round the corner there to get to the expo, and that'll drive him into the inferno compartment. Rage is up. That's his last spell. Stay alive here. Stay alive. Has to get the triple. Come on, you to pull it together here. That grand expo down. Rage needs to carry him through. He needs to start the law load to protect the queen from these expos. King comes down to the bottom with a couple wizards. They can clear out down there. Lalo, start, uh, go, now, <laughs> oh, he's only engaging one expo at a time. He can heal through that. He can heal through that. One minute 30. King doing a good job tanking down at the bottom. Wizards taking all the defenses down there while he tanks. Here comes the Lalo. Couple Tessas popping in the middle. He still has a queen ability. Let's keep an eye on that queen ability. Gets the Tessa down, lots of Tessas popping in the middle. Tornado trap goes off. Come on, queen. Don't waste your queen ability. Get the Tessas down, stay safe. Lalo has uh, taken over the tank into the Expos. The enemy king is going to potentially be a problem here. Keep an eye on him. Ward ability through the Inferno. The queen is attacking a wall. She's not going to the king. That is perfect. That is so perfect for him. Can he still get this? Let's do the air defense. Can fall short? All the balloons are dead. I think it's a fail. I think it's a fail. Did the Queen Walkers just lose? Is Bang Bang going to the finals? Oh man, let's bounce out of there. That is a fail. What do we got going on over here? I'm gonna I'm gonna hide the screen here, and we will play this attack from the start here. Nita came in here with a super archer attack. Super archers with a queen walk once again, but no lightning to take out that centered eagle artillery. So the king came in over on the left side with a wizard to force the queen into the base there. He's got a jump spell so we can charge the eagle artillery and they can have the super archers work around the outside ahead of the queen potentially. Or go to the town hall first. One of the one way or the other. Sneaky goblins to help out with the king. King pops his ability. Only brought two healers. I guess there might be more in a CC. But we'll see what he did here. Jump to the core. This is looking good. Super archers down at the bottom. That's like kind of what I expected. End on the infernos, right? You can reach the infernos over the walls with the super archers, but the queen can reach them from the inside as well. So now they can work together, doing a two-prong attack here. But the super archers came in really late in the attack there, and that is potentially an issue. 
But the queen takes the eagle artillery before the uh, super archers take too much fire there. Freezes the eagle just to make sure that she gets through. She still has to fight the CC. And there's a ton of damage up on the top corner of the base. But Rages can uh, get him through that. He's got plenty of spell support here. Rages up to Queen. Get through the Inferno. Get the CC down. Okay. Pop the Hound. Slow him down a little bit. That's all right. I feel like a lot of times when we're doing Super Archer attacks... The primary thing that we're watching for is clock management. Clock management is so incredibly important during this attack. Because Super Archers generally have enough force to take the base. It all comes down to a matter of do they have the time to take the base. And especially when you switch over and you do no Siege Machines. When you have a Siege Machine, you can easily make up for the time of the Siege Barracks or something. But when you don't have a Siege Barracks and you're going in this with just the Queen Charge and the Super Archers, then it definitely makes it a lot more difficult. He's got one more balloon that he hasn't deployed yet. Dropped onto this uh, Arch Tower here while the Queen's tanking them all. Little, uh, archers there that he can drop in for cleanup. Oh, this is looking good. This is looking good. Nita! I told you guys, 13 stars, 13 stars would be enough to take the win. And what did I tell you? It's a time fail. I'm just, I'm just messing with you. It's a time fail. 99%. He did not get it. Imagine if Yuda tripled right there. If Yuda would have tripled and this got a 99%. <laughs> the Queen Walkers goes down. Bang Bang is going to be advancing to the grand finals. Now we have to wait and we're going to have to see which team is going to join them there. Is it going to be Oxy or is it going to be Naughty Fenrir? We are live with the second semi-final of the Town Hall 11 Queso Cup Tournament. We just saw the Queen Walkers go down to Bang Bang, and now only three teams remain. We have Bang Bang, who's already secured the spot for the finals, and we have Naughty Fin Rear and Oxy, who are still fighting for this spot. 2,500 euros are on the line here as a prize pool for the teams that make it into the finals. They'll be splitting it 1,800 euros for first place, 700 euros for second place. But it's time to find out which team will be joining Bang Bang. Let's kick it off here with Mahi starting in with a P.E.K.K.A. Smash with some Zap Quake to take out a bunch of Expos. Wall break into the base here. Bowler's coming down behind. Solid funnel here. And a lot of the damage already thinned out. He's got a Skeleton spell that he can use to take out the Eagle Artillery. But we don't know if there's Tess up there yet. The King's going to work on the top edge of the base. And the Pekka's will Super Wall break through another wall to get access to the Town Hall, to the Inferno. In fact, both Infernos. Everything is staying very nicely grouped up here. Now, the nice part about Pekka's is they do tank all the beams of the Inferno, but they need the healers with them. And the healers are not traveling with them. And look at this! Is He's not going to one star, is he? The healer stayed back on the queen. The Tessas pop on the Eagle Artillery. He's not going to get that either. This is going to fail. That was looking so good, but the healers never transferred off of the queen. And then the Tessas around the Eagle Artillery. And we kind of expected the Tessas. That was a long shot to see if they would actually not have the Tessas there. But it defends the skeleton spell. He'll continue to rack up some more percentage here. He did get a decent amount out with the P.E.K.K.A. So it's not going to be a triple. He doesn't have enough troops left to even finish it off in time. Even if he can keep his queen alive here. But he will break through the wall. And he'll continue getting as much as he can. We do expect that the winner of this match will have either 12 or 13 stars. That's kind of been the average here. Tunnel 11 without seed machines is extremely difficult. But these players are good. They've made it through hundreds of other teams to reach it to this point in the tournament. But they're one step away from the prize money. And they need to keep on pushing. He still has the queen ability here. I mean, look how close he came here, guys. If the healer transferred, he probably would have been able to triple it either way. You know what I mean? That's rough. That's rough. The P.E.K.K.A. has got to stay alive, though. 
Maybe he could have done something to loop back around and get the Eagle Artillery later on, but he needed the extra punch to get through the base there and then have a chance to get back to it. Like, if the Queen was going to take this path anyways, then, I mean, whatever. <laughs> all right, all right. 89% will be the final for the first attack. Let's try. Coup is live. Coming in with a Queen Charge Lalo. Starting off with a CC pull. Getting a dragon. But that's all. I feel like we saw this base yesterday. And they ran the same CC. Because I remember... No, I think last yesterday... Uh, an ice golem came out of CC and he pulled it with a hog instead. But this time, leaving the ice golem in there and going for a very similar attack to what he saw yesterday on the previous round of the tournament. This queen potentially going to get drawn off here fighting the dragon as it chases the king, but it does turn and the queen goes the right direction. She'll super wall break in initially. He can jump past that and work his way all the way in. Honestly, could have done with uh, four or three or four super wall breakers and got through as well, but the jump is definitely going to guarantee his access into the base. How far does he need to go here? He has to take out the enemy queen. He needs to get the eagle, the multi. Lots of value right here. Definitely a lot of potential. I don't remember if this, uh, this same attack tripled when they attempted it yesterday when they ran the same base. So that'll be interesting to you see if he does triple this if they didn't. I wouldn't imagine that they'd run the same base if it didn't get tripled, so. So maybe they're just banking on their defense holding. He'll pop the queen ability, get to the enemy queen. The CC's dealt with. The Queen's dealt with, the Eagle's dealt with, and Inferno's dealt with. He still has two haste and two freezes to push the Lalo through the base. He gets the cleanup down nice and early to get that moving. The queen might pull the ice golem out of the CC, but no, she's going to break to the north and she will avoid it. Into the multi inferno. He still has a ward ability. He can uh, pop it now to get through that. He'll freeze it instead to go first. And now that's going to make so the other blues have a chance to catch up. They will get the warded ability. That was a better way to do it. Haste through and he's looking good all the way to the finish. He's still got a freeze. He can lock up the air defense. Gets a nice split. There's the freeze. Locking up the Wizard Tower and the Air Defense together. Looping back around. And look at that. He has a small amount of blooms there. Split off to the Wizard Tower. They're going to take it down. He'll pop his uh, poison that he did not use earlier in the attack to take out Air Skellies. And he's looking good for the triple. Naughty Fenrir. Doing what they needed to do. And they're going to start this war in the lead. Beautiful. Queen Charge Lalo here. Good stuff. Good stuff. Harmon Deep is live. Here we go. Coming in with a Zap Dragon attack using two Quakes and seven Lightnings. Going after the Queen. Just softening her up a little bit over there. And then Lightning on the other side to take out two air defenses. So we got the Queen damage with a couple of uh, Lightning there, using three lightning to take that out just to make so that he could get extra damage on the queen. Rather than getting the quake value, it was uh, more valuable to get the damage onto the queen so you can take her down easier with the dragons later on. Heroes are coming in at a kind of a weird angle here. They're going after the sweeper. He can pop his king and he can finish clearing that compartment. And he has semi decent access into. The Eagle Artillery at this point. The King pulls the CC, and unfortunately, that CC is all going to go to the Queen and stop her from getting the enemy Queen. He might just want to pop her ability early. Doesn't have a poison up there. Baby Dragon will help get down some of the uh, small troops there, but the Queen does go down, and the Dragons are going to have to finish out the rest of the base. One Dragon splits off from the group and will continue to funnel on the outside. That's actually an optimal number there. He gets sent in a couple of blues to go snipe off that Archdar while the Dragon is tanking. It's a really smart play right there. Dark shower down. One more shot, one more shot. Heals through the Eagle Artillery in the middle. That'll get him through both multi-infernos. Now watch this enemy queen. The queen could pull the dragons forward and distract them for a while, but they're going to one-shot her, and they will split off to the multis. They're outside of the heal, but do they have enough health to finish it off? 
He's got one more wizard that he has not deployed yet. One dragon splits over to the sweeper to go help out that bottom dragon. It's at full health. It can take the arch tower. That's going to reinforce the bottom flank. And now the dragon's moving to the Teslas. They get the pathing in. That one's going after that last Tesla, but I don't think that last Tesla can stop this many dragons at this point. I think that Harmon Deep is going to bring in the triple here. And Oxy answering the call. And he's going to take this one through. That's a three star. We'll pop him some confetti right there. Easy day. Getting it done with the dragons. Beautiful setup. Fantastic execution. And the heal in the middle of the base there came in clutch. Two Japanese teams made it into the semifinals. Naughty Finrear and the Queen Walkers. So we will see. I guess technically three because uh, Unicorns of Love is also technically on the Queen Walkers team. And they're also from Japan. So... Technically two, but also three, you know? All right. Here we go. Coming in with a Warden Walk. Ooh, a Warden Walk at Town Hall 11 is interesting. That was a very interesting zap location there. It's Pekka's Witches Super Archers. This is unique. I'll give it to him. This is unique. But can it work? This Warden taking over 30 seconds to take down three buildings in that top corner. That is why it is so incredibly important that when you get to Town Hall 12 and Town Hall 13 that you level up your Warden like crazy to make so that you can do Warden Walks. It's such a powerful tactic. However, it is very, very slow with a slow Warden, with a low level Warden. When you start to get over level 30 into level 40, the damage picks up like crazy exponentially it's crazy how much more damage he does at those levels but here we go working his way in with the king up ahead pekka's in the middle with the super archers down behind needs to get the healer transfer right now it's onto the queen but as soon as that queen gets hopped off he wants it to transfer over to the pekka's and he needs the pekka's to stay in the base he's got a jump spell and he can use a jump to connect all the compartments here Look at the uh, way that he placed the jump belt. Did he purposely not open up this Inferno compartment? That way he can get into the channel and then drive up on the base. The Super Archers have partially broken to the outside of the base. They're following the King, the Witch, and one P.E.K.K.A. that broke out. But the Queen and a couple Super Archers in the middle are going to have to take that entire core. They have the Rages. They have the Invisibility spells. They can do it. He popped the Invisibility right there, and it protects every single troop in the core of the base from not only the expos but also from that multi inferno super arch is doing a great job on the bottom side there working with the pekka the king has gone down at this point the witch is also going to provide some tanking in there he needs to get to the splash damage down there with the uh, bomb tower and he does get it down there very easily looking strong did you push in baby dragon look at this op baby dragon don't hit a black mine oh hit the black mine grabs out the baby dragon right out of the sky there but the queen pops her ability she will try to get in that multi the super archers are on it they have the healers can they finish this in time they all go down the multi inferno is uh, it's targeting all the small troops there but the warden is holding the healers did the warden just fail this attack for them could he have made it either way? I think he was in trouble on time regardless. But that baby dragon going down to the black mine also could have made a difference there. He'll get out of it at 94%. And we are tied. Percentage wise, 5% into Naughty Fenrir's favor. Five, let's see, four or five buildings total is all that separates the team right now. Hi, it's live against Zaki. Coming in with a zap quick. Dragon. Is that about two air defenses? It's a sweeper as well and an arch tower. Grabbing out another arch tower up top. Getting that quake damage. Ooh, we, we should have got the quake damage out of that uh, town hall. That's all right. That's all right. He can work with that. Wait, I feel like we saw this base yesterday. We did. And they're repeating the same strategy. They're running the same base and they're going to take advantage of it.
And that should work for him, unless they change the traps around to stop it. They must be out of basis or something. Maybe they didn't expect to get into the into the semifinals, and they just don't have any more bases. But these all all these bases were run in the previous match, so they're attacking it the exact same way. And why wouldn't they? A lot of dragons splitting off to the top corner. Needs enough to go to the Eagle Artillery here. The heroes are working their way through. They get the enemy queen down. Has one dragon that can split off and take down that eagle. But is this going to go through? I'm not 100% convinced that it is. Like, he's copying the same attack as yesterday, but is not going the same. The Warden takes a black mine and goes down, and the dragons are dropping like flies out of the sky. And it will be a defense here. I think it was very, very close during yesterday's war. Maybe they changed around some traps, moved some black mines into the path of those dragons, and then expected them, trolled them into running the same plan on it, and then caught them with a mistake there. Nice job. Wait, wait. This isn't going to go through, is it? No, it's not. All right, the test will hold strong. All right. Zaki holds strong on defense. A king is going to get this dragon killed before it gets Inferno. 89% will be the final. Amir. From friend rear. Coming in from the rear. <laughs> okay, never mind. Let's dive in here and see what he can do with a Zap Quake. 3 E drag. Two P.E.K.K.A.S. And five witches. This. This is where we get creative, guys. I like this already. I like this already. Gonna zap out both sides of this eagle artillery. Whoa, no one's going after their defenses. Wait. If he zaps out the air defenses here, Electro Dragons could clear that half of the base on their own. Look at the chain value all the way through there. Holy chain value. Can they survive and get the eagle artillery down? They can even chain through the eagle. And can they hit the air defense on the other side of it? I don't think they can. Maybe that's too far away. That is one tile too far. But the heroes are going to come to the bottom corner. Dregs are trying to get through this eagle, but I don't know that they're going to make it. A lot of firepower in that corner. I think he underestimated that corner. Is that going to cost him? The queen is uh, holding the attention of the expo. If he can keep those expos off of the e-drag for at least a, it's a decent amount there, then the e-drag can continue working its way through. A freeze comes down to protect a baby dragon. The e-drag at low health takes a black minus. The witches come in the left-hand corner. The hero's still moving up the gut of the base. The queen's staying alive in there with a the baby dragon supporting her. She needs to get that eagle artillery down ASAP. Here comes the eagle strikes. Doesn't warn through it. Come on, queen. Get over there and get it. Over there and get it. Is he holding the warden through for the multi? His Pekkas are getting beat down by that uh, eagle artillery, though. But the eagle finally drops. The queen will pop her ability. This is not going to happen for him, guys. Amir with a very interesting strategy. He got creative, and unfortunately, it wasn't going to be enough. It will be a defense. He will rack in a little bit more here. I think the Warden will have time to pick off another building or two. A minute for a Warden walk? Ah. What can you do? Interesting attack there. Very, very interesting. He almost got that right-hand corner down. He just needed, like, maybe one more E-drag, but... One way or another... He's basically sporting... A completely split attack. Where they're not going to get any synergy from one half to the other. It was a two-prong completely separated attack that doesn't gain synergy from the other side. And you really need this synergy. You have to maximize every point of synergy you can as you move through your attack. Otherwise, you're you're going to come up short. You can't pull that off at Town Hall 11 without Siege Machines. What can you do, though? Nice try. Does he get that storage? I don't think he does. Hmm. No. No, he does not. One more shot. You need one more shot. 85%. Guys. 
We are literally one building split here on percentage. One building is all the Sep Racy's teams. Yogesh is live. Here we go. Starting off with some lightning to take out the Inferno. Couple blues. Go snipe off the Arch Tower. Baby Dragon can form the funnel here for the Queen. It's going to be a Queen Walk mass dragon attack. I guess it's not that mass. There's only six of them. There might be more in a CC though. Using Sneaky Goblins to push the Queen into the base. And we'll see if she steps into those Expos. He's got a Super Wall Breaker. Does she go in? Does she go in? Eddie may take control of this Queen. He has a Super Wall Breaker. So if he does not go to the Expos initially, he can grab them through a Wall Break up ahead. Hmm, let's see. I don't know where she's gonna go. He wall breaks anyways. I think she's gonna circle back though. No, she is going for it. Oh, he goes to ability. Not good. It's not good. Eagle strikes are going to his healers. He drops the king. He has to get the king to tank the eagle strikes there to be able to continue on. Rages up the queen again. Watch for red mines popping on the queen's healers. That could be detrimental. Oh, the expo's onto the queen's healers. He's in a lot of trouble. He's in a lot of trouble here with this queen charge. He'll get the town hall down. But missing the expo is going to just end this raid instantly. There's no way he's going to make it through. He still has a Tessa farm, a multi inferno. Oh. Strong defenses here, guys. Strong defenses. Whichever team ends up winning the grand finals, I will collect base links for them and we will uh, share them when that video goes live. All right. So if you want some of these bases from these winning teams, then uh, definitely keep an eye out for that. 80% will be the final. 81%. Like a sneaky goblin got a collector up there. Kalia is live from Fenrir with an opportunity to push their team heavily into the lead. I'm going to with Zap Dragons. Starting off with the King and an Ice Golem to go in by himself by the looks of it and grab out this air defense. Uses lightning on the opposite side of the base there on both sides of the Eagle Artillery. To take out the Expo, the Eagle, and an air defense over there. More Sneaky Goblins up on the top corner. With Dragons starting their way in up there to rush the air defense. Leaving up two air defenses, but the Queen will work her way into one of them. The Queen has a lot of Goblins coming out of the CC. And there's a Witch in the CC as well, spawning tons of ground fodder here. That's just going to roadblock these Dragons. But there is a dragon up there helping the queen. If she can pop her build to get the air defense down, that'll set up a beautiful funnel here for the dragons to continue their way through. She pops her ability there. The archer is giving her just enough tanking. She will make it through. And right as the air defense goes down, an E-Drag replaces the queen, rages through the core of the base here. He's got one more heal that it can use to carry him into this final inferno. There's the ward ability. The E-Drag goes down rather quick up at the top side. That's going to be a problem. That's going to be a big problem. He doesn't have the pathing to get into the bottom Inferno here. He heals up, but... They'll hang out inside of the heal for a bit, but they're not going to go to that multi-Inferno on the bottom of the base. I don't think this is going to go through. I think Kalia was not getting the pathing that... Uh, that he or she needed to be able to pull this off. Kalia's a... Is Kalia a girl, I assume? All right, nice try. Nice try. Low percentage though, this is really gonna hurt. How much more percentage can she get here? Can she rack it in as much as she can? Oh man, a couple of minions on the backside would be so valuable over here. Look how much free trash there is out there. If they can get through the Tesla, that dragon can pick up a lot of it. Survive. If the warden tanks the wizard tower? Yes! Okay. 
Keep on getting percentage. Every point counts here. Oh man, the warden coming in clutch here. Finally doing something useful. Okay. All the way through. Get as much as you can. 25 seconds to get as much more percentage. Don't hit a black mine. Keep the dragon alive. Keep on moving. 80% ties it. 80% on this attack brings us to an exact tie. You won't make it that high. It is going to be a 77. 78! 78! Alright, we are 2% split here. 2% split going into the final attack. Two buildings are all that separates these teams. And the final attacks will go in simultaneously, so no team has an advantage. Let's dive in here to Zaki. And we will be bouncing back and forth between the two attacks here. Try not to miss anything as we move through. But he's going to start off with the king to form a funnel here. A couple sneaky goblins to clear it out. And he's got witches, mass witches, to work his way into the base here. Big test of farm popping by the king. Wall break in. And is he going to insert all the witches right there? A golem coming down with him. All right, very interesting approach here for Zaki. The healer is going to keep everything topped off as he moves through the Molten Inferno, but he will freeze through it anyways. He will be ending on the Eagle Artillery, and that is very, very risky. Keep an eye on the Town Hall as well. Let's bounce over to the side here and see what they have going on as that continues to push to the base here. Nawa's on the other side, already has the Town Hall down as he comes with a Queen Charge into Miners. The Queen Charge has already dealt with the CC. Nope, not yet, not yet. CC's down there. But he does have access to both of the Multi Infernos. He'll grab one out there. And we'll see if he can get access to the other one. As soon as we can see where this queen is going, if the healers are going to be safe, we'll bounce back to the other side there and see how the witches are progressing through the base. Looking good. Get the CC down. King on the outside. The miners are starting in. They're going to try to drive the queen back through the jump and get to that eagle artillery. The queen will pop her ability right there. And does she take the turn? Does she make the turn? This is so critically important right here. This can make the difference in the war. If the queen gets the inferno down before she loses all of her healers, Come on, get over there, get over there, get over there. Come on, queen, turn! There she goes! Do the healer survive? Uh-oh, uh-oh, the healers go down! He's in trouble! Let's bounce back to the other side here. Let's see how the witches are doing. Witches continue to march through, and are they still alive at this point? The golem was out front tanking for them. They are still marching through! The eagle goes down with the jump spell, carrying him through, but all the heroes are gone. The golem is gone. He's down to one healer. They're both going to fail, I think. This one into the 60s, into the 70s, right in there somewhere. It's a low percentage witch attack. This side, he's already up to 75%. Can he close it? Miners still moving their way through. There's a big pack coming up from behind. The worker made the trash over there. The forward group is picking off the ground skellies. The queen must have done just enough to carry him through. Big pack of miners there. 24 seconds. Got to stop on the ground, Skelly. Still got to get through a wizard tower. Warden's going to pick up the tanking on the expo. Maybe preserve a couple miners there as they're under their final stride. I think it's enough. I don't think he's going to get it. But I think it's enough for the win. Done what they needed to do, and they will be moving on. But look at that, uh, look at that OP attack on the other side there. He didn't get the win, but he got the 69%. Oxy takes the win, and they will be moving on to the grand finals. It was a it was a nice try there from Zaki. Nice try. Nice try.